Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in crypto and break it down in bite-sized pieces. Today, just like the thumbnail suggests, this is why I am smiling and I'm pretty happy. And it really all comes down to JP Morgan and that they've decided finally to actually let some of their customers, oh, well, actually, excuse me, all of their customers get into cryptocurrency. But there's a catch. And I'm going to go over that in a little bit. But uh, to me, I think this is big news. And there's a couple of different caveats we really need to talk about. But what it shows me is that JP Morgan is coming around and it shows that they see the demand and they are potentially uh, trying to get in front of the train that is cryptocurrencies and digital assets. And then to prove my point, I just want to do uh, just a little quick recap about what's going on with NYDIG and the small to medium types of uh, banks. Also what uh, Grayscale and BNY Mellon are planning as far as like that uh, uh, ETF potentially. And finally, uh, I'm just going to go over a couple things about what I say is, is like, as I call it, blockbustered. And then the last story we're going to go over is uh, SEC Chairman uh, Gensler outlines regulation of crypto assets relating to security-based swaps. And what this really all comes down to is uh, synthetics. And that is a uh, not a great uh, uh, news story for Binance. But we'll go over all those things. But first, let's take a look at what's going on into the market. And today, it is the 22nd, I think. Yeah. And uh, hey, market's up, right? 1.32 trillion. Everybody's happy. I thought it might go down a little bit uh, after that uh, truly boring events called the B word. The only thing that was great about that was Kathy Wood. But uh, that's what the market's doing. Prices are up a little bit, maybe four to 6%, nothing fantastic. I just wanna get in the story. So let's just break into why I talk about JP Morgan. Is this a blockbuster moment or just a great genius move? So what I'm talking about here is this was a uh, an article it just came out today. <laughs> I love this stuff. I love this because Jamie Dimon was so adamant about how awful cryptocurrency was. And they were getting into uh, blockchain. They were hiring blockchain developers. And I cautioned people. I said, you know what? Just because they're getting into blockchain does not mean that they're getting into cryptocurrency. Those are two different things. China made that abundantly clear. But when I see this story about cryptocurrency, I'm like, <laughs> all right, this is a good stuff. So what's happening? In an ironic twist, CEO Jamie Dimon's well-established distrust of the industry, JP Morgan has reportedly become the first major U.S. bank to provide all wealth management clients with access to Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency funds. Advisors in JP Morgan's $630 billion wealth management division can now accept orders to buy and sell five crypto products, including Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust, Bitcoin Cash Trust, Ethereum, Ethereum Classic products, and Osprey Funds, Bitcoin Trust. The policy change becomes effective on July 19th. So real quick, there's a lot to break down there. And uh, I actually was notified of this on Alex Mascioli's show uh, this afternoon. And Alex and, and the crew were going back and forth, and uh, they were de debating if this was actually even relevant to them actually offering. And Alex said, I don't want... All these YouTubers tomorrow or today uh, talking about how JP Morgan is offering cryptocurrency to everybody. Well, here I am. So the thing that I will say about this, and then they all went, they, they all had their opinions. To me, what it says to me is that JP Morgan, they must have a level of trust and they must have a level of not being notified that there is some pretty big demand for cryptocurrency or else they wouldn't offer it. And you have to you have to remember that JP Morgan as much as we say that they are the evil empire and you know they're like uh you know devil incarnate. You know, uh their job is to make their customers and their shareholders their shareholders happy. So they're not going to bring to them some crazy ponzi scheme and go, you know, even if their their uh wealth advisors aren't allowed to even talk to them about it, they're going to they're if they're going to bring something forth to them, it should be a pretty solid product, whether they are there to give advice or not. Because in this specific situation, their wealth advisors are uh, told not to give any type of advice to any of the people that bring it forward, any of their clients. So first of all, I will say this. Um, if you're going to offer, if you're going to say you could put it out there to your clients, there is a a nonverbal understanding 
that this is a good product. If your wealth advisors say, hey, we have this product, I can't give you any advice on it, but here it is, do you want it? What do you think? Do you think that they're just gonna give you some some slap happy, uh, goofy uh, offer? They'll be like, you know what? This is just out there and it's up to you. And why I think this is a genius move is because they're gonna put it out there to their clients, kind of like, look, kind of like my channel actually. They're like, hey, uh, this is investment opinion, not investment advice. What they're saying is, hey, this is a, an investment opportunity and I'm not saying you to get into it. You can look at it and do your own research and uh, we're just bringing it forward to you because there's so much demand and uh, we can't go forward. So one of two things could happen. Uh, when they offer these trusts, they could go up massively. And then what the customers, all the different uh, you know, uh, affluent clients and all the people that are in there, uh, they can look at JP Morgan and go, you know what? You guys were right on. I will stick with you. Fantastic work. I know you couldn't say much. I'm just happy that you brought it to me, right? And JP Morgan looks like geniuses, even though they're just, they're just very stoic in the background going, mm -hmm, yeah, didn't do anything. Then on the flip side of that, let's say everything crashes. I mean, just for the sake of argument, right? Sake of argument, everything crashes and goes down and Bitcoin goes to zero, right? They can just be in the backgrounds and be, and be like, well, look, we couldn't give you any advice. Uh, we brought it to you to do your own research. That didn't work out, but there was a, a, you know demand. Let's get you into something a little bit more stable. And again, remember, we didn't give you the advice. You did it. I think it's genius. I think it's genius because it, it just totally offloads all of their, uh, their responsibility to this whole situation. And I know some people will say, well, you know, you brought it to them and, and, and then what are you gonna do? You know, do something like that? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because they just get to sit back and go, there it is. You do, do whatever you want with it. We're just here because of customer demand. Comes, it comes good, they're geniuses. It comes bad, wasn't our fault. Anyhow, to finish this up, we are excited to be onboarded to the JP Morgan Wealth Platform. OBDC remains the lowest price publicly traded Bitcoin fund in the US. And we believe JP Morgan's clients will see value in the product. That's Greg King, founder and CEO of uh, Osprey Funds, told Forbes. Didn't really realize that that was actually a product, but I guess it is. So I guess it's not just Grayscale out there, but uh, great. Anyhow, to finish this up, the new policy applies to all clients, including self-directed clients using the Chase trading app, affluent clients of JP Morgan advisors, and the richest tier, the richest tier of clients served by the private bank. Advisors are not allowed to recommend crypto products to clients and the clients must ask to make crypto trades. So again, genius move. They can just sit back and here's the thing. They know that there is demand for it. They see it all over the place. I mean, we're gonna, we're gonna cover an article just in a bit. Uh, so they know that, 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 that the demand is there. So they're going to affirm that by going, look, people wanna do this, but will they pull the trigger? Let's, let's see if they do it. And uh, I think they will, and I think it'll be a big splash, and uh, we'll see how it all works out. Previously, JP Morgan only allowed private wealth clients to invest in an actively managed Bitcoin fund with crypto firm NYDIG providing custody service. And that leads me to my next point as far as NYDIG and banks and getting everything into it. And actually, before I get into that, I will say this. If we're going to talk about demand, we know the demand's there, right? If JP Morgan's, you know, one of the largest banks in the world is offering this to their clients because they've already done the surveys, already done everything else. This is this the thing that just gets to me. BlackRock CEO's Larry Fink uh, sees very little demand for crypto lately. This is on July 14th. Surprise, uh, your buddies over JP Morgan beat you to it. And then, uh, which is funny because he previously said that Bitcoin has caught the attention of many people. And uh, I know when people talk to me about this thing, they're like, there's no manipulation. Sure. Anyhow, the NY Dig story. This is just very quick. Um, this was actually about this is a, almost a month ago now, June 24th. And it's just a, just a recap. And why I always like to reference this is because some banks just get it and they're going to be out in front. And the banks that don't are going to get what I call blockbustered. 18.3 million Q2 customers will soon be able to buy, sell, and hold bitcoin directly from their bank accounts and just so you know this is they're giving this option to like the small and medium-sized banks as well as to credit unions which is exactly what it says for empty small and medium-sized banks credit unions right there and then the big thing of course is according to gene condo q2's vice president of communications the decision to partner with anyway dig was based on client demand again 
I still believe that there's a, a ton of demand out there, which leads me to my next point when we talk about what's going on with banks getting into the fray and Grayscale. So Grayscale is going to be not partnering up, but in close connections with JP Morgan. They're also in close connections with BNY Mellon. And what do these guys have in common? Well, they're old school, traditional finance, and uh, I think they can get the ball rolling on this uh, thing called an ETF. This was on July 13th. Grayscale Investments announced today that it selected BNY Mellon as an asset servicing provider for the Bitcoin Trust. Through this agreement, BNY Mellon will provide Grayscale Bitcoin Trust with fund accounting and administration. Uh, effective October 1st, 2021. Additionally, it is anticipated that BNY Mellon will provide transfer agency and ETF services for the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust upon its conversion to an ETF. Now look, I've been hearing about ETF for a long time since uh, I got in and it hasn't materialized yet, but I feel like we're a little bit closer. I feel there's no concrete evidence, but you can kind of see where all these partnerships are going and the traditional spaces actually gobbling up crypto. So who knows? Let me know what you think in the comments section. And the last thing I want to talk about before I move on to Ginsler and the SEC is this thing called Blockbuster. And Blockbuster to me just means that when new technology comes in, you can either get on board or you can get run over by it. And that's exactly what happened to Blockbuster. And that's why we have Netflix and Disney Plus and all the different uh, streaming platforms that they just missed the opportunity. And I think what's going on here, if you're a bank, how do you make money as a bank? Well, I mean, you have your fractional reserve lending and of course you move money around. That's, that's also a great way to, uh, to uh, add, your, add your account. Also, you know, lending uh, for loans, mortgages, those types of things. Also for all the different, actually all the different transactions that are going on uh, throughout the globe. Couldn't they just be replaced? And if not totally, I'm not saying totally, but by a fraction of decentralized finance, cryptocurrencies, and digital assets. And look, here's the thing. Uh, the crypto space doesn't have to totally take over everything. They don't. They just have to just take a percentage here and there. Before you know it, uh, in traditional finance, in the banks, 1% to 2% slide per year is pretty big. Now extrapolate that as the technology speeds up and we get better. And then we have different banks coming on board going, you know what, we're tired of seeing uh, all these uh, purchases go to these crypto exchanges and all the money leaving our accounts go over to there for that. We wanna get in as fast as possible before we get what I call blockbustered. So uh, I see where things are going. I could be wrong. Let me know what you think in the comments section, but um, I just see that uh, we're going to, I believe we're going to see a lot more different banks like a JP Morgan, like a BNY Mellon, just get on board because if not, what, what's going to happen? I think there's room for both, but uh, they better step up. And only, only the ones that are fast are going to actually survive. And after that, I think they're going to fall the wayside. Nothing against people who work in the banks. It's not you guys. I mean, you guys are great people. It's the people that set the policy that just really suck. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our last piece where we talk about Gary Ginsler and the SEC. So uh, the SEC chairman outlines regulation of crypto assets relating to security-based swaps. What's going on here? So SEC chairman Gary Ginsler talked about crypto regulation Wednesday before the American Bar Association Derivatives and Futures Law Committee Virtual Mid-Year Program. And he states, make no mistake, it doesn't matter whether it's a stock token, a stable value token backed by securities, or any other virtual product that provides synthetic exposure to underlying securities. These platforms, whether in the decentralized or centralized finance space, are implicated by the securities laws and must work within our securities regime. So that was a lot of, that was a big mouthful, right? But what it really comes down to is this, securities or stocks, really, publicly traded companies, synthetic exposure is things like on Binance, where they say, hey, you can have a synthetic stock of Tesla or Apple or something like that, and you can trade that over here uh, because you can just use your, your cryptocurrency. It's not the actual stock, you know, I own the actual stock or the paper, but it's, in, it's a synthetic part of that. And I actually uh, interviewed a, um, a project that's going to be built on the Cardano network called uh, uh, Indigo. And they're doing the same thing. So I'm wondering how much this really affects them. So 
if Gensler is saying, look, you guys are going to have to uh, come through us or else you're going to get essentially sued, just like what's happening with Ripple here. He states, if these products are security-based swaps, the other rules I've mentioned earlier, such as the trade reporting rules, will apply to them. Then any offer or sale to retail participants must be registered under the Securities Act of 1933 and affected on a national securities exchange. To finish up, he states, We've brought some cases involving retail offerings of security-based swaps. Unfortunately, there may be more. Let me read that again. Unfortunately, there may be more. Uh, there's not a maybe. It's going to be a positive. It's going to be a definite. They're probably going to bring some more court cases. We will continue to use all the tools in our enforcement toolkit to ensure that investors are protected in cases like this. So that is it in a nutshell. And... Um, We'll see what happens. I'm, I'm on the fence about this one uh, because I want a little bit of I don't. A little regulation goes a, wrong, a long way, and I think if we can just get some clarity as to what is a commodity and what is a security uh, and what is a currency, that would be fantastic. Past that, yeah, I don't know. Who knows? But uh, maybe it's a step in the right direction. Maybe it's a step in uh, a little bit too much of a direction. We will see. Anyhow. So that is it for today. So look, I know it was a lot, but a lot of things are going on. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, a like. Consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about on this channel are time sensitive. Uh, but that is it so much for today. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. See you on the next one.